Hello and welcome to TI Precision Labs. In this video, we'll discuss the Mobile Industry Processor Interface, commonly referred to as MIPI. We will start by discussing the basics of the MIPI protocol and its most common use cases. Next, we'll go over the differences in the commonly used units as well as how to go from your image or camera specifications to the needed data rate. We will conclude by looking at some key specifications of TI MIPI switches and how they relate to a MIPI system. The goal of this video is to understand the MIPI protocol specifications and how to choose an appropriate switch for your application. MIPI is a protocol primarily used to interface with a processor on mobile devices. A MIPI system consists of data line groups called lanes, which work together to create a link whose total bandwidth defines the resolution and bit rate of the system. The advantage of this is that many lanes can be used in parallel to increase the link bandwidth while keeping the per lane bandwidth much lower. In one of the most common MIPI configurations, DeFi, these data lanes consist of differential pairs. Additional to the data lanes, there is one clock lane. The data lanes are sampled on both the falling and rising edge of the clock lane, meaning the clock and data lanes will have the same toggle rate or switching frequency. MIPI is often used in personal electronics. One common use case is multi-camera systems where one processor communicates with each camera module. In this scenario, a MIPI switch is often used to control information from each module to the processor. One common point of confusion when discussing protocols like MIPI is terminology on data rate and frequency. Hertz is commonly used in data sheets and online content. It simply refers to how many times the signal is repeated per second. Bits per second refers to the number of bits transmitted each second. For a protocol like DeFi, where each data bit equates to a differential pair toggling, the data rate per lane is twice the frequency per lane on the clock and data lanes. In encoded configurations like CFI, the per lane data rate is sometimes referred to in symbols per second rather than bits per second. This is because the data lanes transmit symbols to be decoded into integers rather than bits directly, like in DeFi. In CFI, each time a signal in the trio toggles, the symbol changes. Therefore, the data rate per lane is also twice the frequency. A CFI configuration is often used because you can achieve the same link bandwidth as DeFi with fewer signals. As mentioned before, in DeFi, these lanes consist of differential pairs which work together in parallel to create a link with one differential lane used for the clock. In CFI, each lane consists of a trio of data lines with no clock signal. The data lines in the trio are compared to one another to create three differential signals. The value of these signals defines a wire state. The change in subsequent wire states defines a symbol. These symbols are then decoded using a 7 to 16 encoding scheme. Because of this added complexity, the per lane bit rate can be 40% lower while using less signals to achieve the same per link bit rate as DeFi. The main trade-off for CFI is that the minimum processor area is higher than DeFi because of the additional blocks needed for the encoding and decoding. One thing to note is that you can design a hybrid system that is compatible with both CFI and DeFi if this flexibility is needed. An advantage for both configurations is that the number of lanes used can be scaled up or down depending on your system's needs. The minimum requirement is only one data lane, which is very beneficial for lower resolution and low power applications like smartwatch displays and personal medical devices. Additionally, a system designed with more than one data lane can be operated with a single data lane during a low power application mode. So let's take a real world example to learn how to calculate data rate from image or camera specifications. Let's say we have a camera module that has a 1600 by 2560 resolution at 60 frames per second with 8 bit RGB. First, let's use a DeFi configuration with four differential data lanes and one differential clock lane for a total of 10 signals. We can calculate the pixel clock frequency, which is simply the resolution times the frames per second. Then we can find the total data rate by multiplying by the image depth. This is our needed link bit rate. From here we can divide our link bit rate by the number of data lanes to get our data and clock rates per lane. Our needed lane bit rate comes out to be about 1.5 gigabits per second 
for this example. But we want to make sure that our system is designed with enough margin to get excellent performance at this bitrate. Typically, a 1.5 to 3 times margin is a good range to ensure excellent system performance without too much overkill. Therefore, a 2.2 to 4.4 gigabits per second design is recommended. Finally, since we are sampling twice per clock cycle, our design bandwidth would be half our data rate. Using the same example, we can do the calculations for a CFI system with three data lanes of trios. Now we only need nine signals. The calculation for pixel clock frequency and data rate per link is the same. For the data rate per lane, now we need to multiply by our encoding scheme, which in CFI is 7 to 16. In this example, the data rate per lane needed would be just under 1 giga symbol per second. And the recommended design bandwidth would be between 1.3 and 2.6 giga symbols per second, which is 40% lower than the DeFi case. Again, the main trade-off with CFI is additional overhead in the system design. With the system requirements in mind, we can now go over key specifications when choosing a MIPI switch. The most important specifications are the device's differential bandwidth, off-isolation, and crosstalk. Note that in most datasheets, these specifications are rated at one particular frequency, but this may not be the frequency your system will operate at. Additionally, off-isolation and crosstalk can vary wildly across frequency. Be sure to check the plots in the datasheet to get an accurate representation of the device's performance for your system's needs. A more in-depth explanation of these specifications can be seen in the TI video linked here on training.ti.com. Eye diagrams can also be a good reference when looking at device performance. These are captured at a specific data rate and are a visual representation of the signal performance. To learn more about eye diagrams, see the TI video linked here on training.ti.com. In this video, we learned about the MIPI protocol and what parameters to consider when choosing an appropriate signal switch for a MIPI application. Please visit ti.com to learn more about our products. Thank you.